Hey, 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 this is Dan Tracy from Save the World. You're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Turn it up. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, today we've got another interview for you with a, a fantastic musician. Uh, from the, He's in the Nashville area. Uh, Dan Tracy is on the line with us from the band Save the World. And that is a big name but they make a big sound, and you, uh, it, it's great music. And Dan's done a lot of stuff. He's a very interesting uh, character in the music business, and I'm really excited to talk to him today. Before we get started, uh, you are listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus, and that is LudiniRockandRollCircus.com. I'd like to thank my sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine, PPLMag.com, Pittsburgh's first internet radio TV network, online community and business directory, you can listen to, watch, download with a, a lot of the latest uh, audio and video uh, from members of the community. You read articles. You can grab, get coupons. You can find businesses. You can start your own magazine page. There's a lot of cool stuff to do there. It's a great community. Several million uh, uh, visitors every day to it. So if you've got something like a podcast, ahem, <laughs> it might be a place uh, to look into uh, getting a page. Like I said, you're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi. And uh, on the line with us today, we've got Dan Tracy and possibly some other uh, members of the band uh, Save the World uh, joining us. But uh, Dan is uh, a a uh, Nashville-based musician. Uh, They say freedom lies in being bold. For the accomplished professional musician in the modern rock trio Save the World, that means taking time out of their hectic schedules to form a band that plays the music they love and then paying forward the good vibes with soaring hooks and uplifting messages. Uh, Dan says, when, when I was young, uh, when I was trying to come up with names for the band, he says, I, I saw the phrase, save the world in a movie theater. And I thought about that statement a lot, recalls Dan Tracy. It felt like it encompassed everything that I wanted the band to be. It filled people up with inspiration. It was positive. It fit perfectly with the music I wanted to make. Songs you could blast loudly driving around with the windows down. And you know what? That pretty much sums up their sound. (laughs) Uh, Dan, welcome to the uh, Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hey, Lou. Glad glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, So, let's. Now, you didn't start out in Nashville. You were originally from New England. Um, That's right. so So, tell us how you got started. And you got started playing guitar. Is that, that that's your primary instrument, or, or did you use something else first? No, actually, I, I played drums since I was about five or six. Uh, my family was kind of musical. On my mom's side, uh, I'd go to family reunions, and all the uncles uh, had a band when I would go there. Literally, be, you know, but they're a big family, so it was five, six guys just playing great music, and I grew up on that. I always wanted to play guitar, but I never got around to it till later when I was about. Uh, I think 12, I kind of got serious about it. But I played drums and uh, all through high school and played in high school jazz competitions and uh, did did pretty well there and, and uh, just kind of progressed out of there. I also played piano, uh, you know, keyboards. That's I actually like to play keyboards more than anything, but I've made m- the most money playing guitar and singing. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Uh, so, like, what are your... Uh... So, so what you see is yet the family obviously influenced you, uh, you know, the situation. But what, um, like, what kind of what kind of music, like, really kind of got you going there in the beginning? What were you listening to that you went like, yeah, I love this? Oh, in the beginning? Well, gosh, yeah. I mean, when I was when I was a young boy, I was listening to KTEL Records that had Elvis on it and um, the, the Carpenters, and and then uh, you know, I'm the youngest of six, so I got all my brothers and sisters' music, and I grew up on bands like Bread. Uh, which I really, really love David Gates, and also Elton John, Yellow Brick Road, Pink Floyd, uh, you know, Zeppelin, all the way up through Black Sabbath. I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff we listen to. So you have very, you have like very eclectic tastes and influences. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, really everybody in this band does, uh, which is what I love about it, that we don't put any boundaries on our music, you know. Now, you do have a, uh, um, a more formal, though, music education. You attended Berkeley, correct? Well, I went for a I went for a summer program to see if I would okay. like it, and um, and I did, and I I did like it. But I, I, to be completely honest, I wasn't mature enough to appreciate what was in front of me. So okay. I I, uh, I jumped in a band and went on the road because I wanted to be in front of screaming girls and play loud rock and roll. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that that lore was was you know more or less 
asterisk for me. So now, now, Dan, a lot, a lot, a lot of people don't know you have. Um, I mean, you do a lot of different things, um, mm-hmm. and you are a very uh, successful songwriter um, in your own right, and have had other people record your songs and. Uh, uh, you know, have some some success, a lot of success with that. Uh, tell us a little bit. Give us like, like the sort of like Reader's Digest version of uh, what you have done here with your with the songwriting. Well, mainly my songwriting. Um, I like to write with a lot of other people that I respect. Uh, it's all a click thing to me. It's not so much a name thing as, as much as who I, uh, you know, who has cuts with who or anything like that. I just like to write with people that you connect with. Um, and you can tell when you get in a room with somebody. Sometimes you get in a room and you think it's going to be great, and, and it just, you know, there's nothing there. But um, I write with a couple people uh, a lot that I uh, that I like, and that uh, that's very helpful. But we've I've had success just uh, mainly, to be honest, in film and TV stuff, um, and that pays really good. So uh, that's kind of what I went chasing for a while. Uh, and then, you know, I've, I've pitched songs to lots of other people and have some side cuts and other things like that. But but mainly it's been film and TV and in my own stuff, um, you know, in, the, in that regard. I don't know how you would classify success. I think I make more money <laughs> off of my, my live touring, you know. <laughs> okay. So, well, I just mean that, you know, so you've got, you've had, you've worked with some, um, you know, really, you know, kind of like famous people, people know, and you've, you've had songs placed in, in films and stuff like that. And um, Sure. That's a, so that's like a whole other world that a lot of people just completely, uh, you know, are, are sort of unaware of. It's a sort of side of the music business that people don't see. It's a little bit behind the scenes in the sense that, you know, you're not out there, you know, I mean, you are with your band, obviously, but when, sure. you're just, when you're just a songwriter in the background, you know, people may not realize that, oh, I didn't know John Hyatt uh, wrote that song that Bonnie Raitt had a hit with, you know, that, that sort of right. thing. Sure. Yeah. Um no, it's really neat. I kind of fell into it by accident. I actually, in the in the late 80s, I started singing jingles. And um, Joe Lynn Turner and a, a producer named Lisa Ratner got me into that. And I did that for a few years before I got sick of the snow and moved down here south. But um, <laughs> I, I ran into another great writer, uh, Paul Taylor, who was a member of Winger, and he was in Steve Perry's band, Aldo Nova, Stevie Nicks, a lot of different bands. But he, he's a great pop writer, and we share a kinship in the type of music that we like to write and like to produce. And we got together and knocked out a bunch of songs that got placed on uh, TV and, and movies, Hilary Duff stuff, and, you know, everything from, you know, straight-ahead pop to, you know, I call it girl pop rock, and and uh, to, to heavier stuff, to swamp rock, we've, we've, we've done a little bit of everything. And then, I've, you know, I've done some stuff on my own in that regard, too, and uh, with some other co-writers. But that business is great because um, when I got into it, people were writing one- and two-minute songs for TV because they're like, well, they only want the meat. But mm-hmm. I don't do that. I want to write full songs. So I was writing full songs, and if they weren't getting cut by artists or placed, I would ship them out to my publisher for them to listen to, and they would get them placed for TV and film. And they liked it because it was real songs. It wasn't you know, some guy just trying to write background music. Uh-huh. So that's, that, that's how it became successful uh, for me. Um, and that industry has kind of softened up a little, like like the, the you know the, the real music biz <laughs> over the mm-hmm. years. So you know you got to claw and scratch for for that too. But um, but yeah, so that's yeah so that's how, one one aspect of what I do. Yeah. Well, this is really interesting because um, you know a lot of the musicians that I interview, a lot of songwriters, you know they have their niche. You know they're blues, right. they're rock, they're country, whatever. But you have you're able to shift gears. I mean you've got music that kind of like fits in a lot of different places. Uh, is that like a conscious decision? Okay, we're going to sit down and write something that's going to be Nashville friendly or, you know, pop country friendly or girl pop friendly. And now we're going to sit down and write something that's going to be rock. Or Like how do you, do, or is it just come out? You, you and Paul sit down and just whatever happens happens. How does it work? Yeah, sometimes we sit down and we go, yeah, let's write a, let's write a, you know, a Kelly Clarkson kind of hit, and, and mm-hmm. this kind of hook or Sometimes definitely we go in with an approach, but most of the times we go, okay, what do you got? Because we've, mm-hmm. we've all started started something, you know, and we put those little bits and nuggets down on our phones or whatever while we're driving, and then we go, how about this? How about this? And then inevitably after one or two we go, yeah, that's cool. Let's jump on that, you know. And that's, that's really where it starts. And like I said, Paul's the same way. He just he loves all kinds of music. Um, and and it's, so it's fun when you get with somebody like that. You can instantly hear their you know, where their subliminal references are kind of coming from in the 
flavors of the songs that you're yeah. doing. You, you know, you run down that road just enough to give it that little, you know, nod to it without completely ripping it off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so let's, before we get into Save the World, and because and, this, really, this is really awesome, um, Tell us you work you work with somebody else who's like in my in my world in my mind it's mega famous it's mega important you work with Alan Parsons so tell us about your work with Alan Parsons. Uh, well, I've been with Alan, with Alan for about six years now. Um, I will tell you he is the real deal, and uh, he's the, one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the business. He's he's uh, he's a gem, and I mean that. Um, he's just easy to work for. He kind of lets everybody do what they're good at. And I think that that's his genius. Um, you know, the more I get to know him, it's like, you know, a lot of producers, uh, myself included, are pushy. They have this vision of what they want, and they want it, and they try to pull that out of the artist, where I think Alan lets everybody be who they're going to be, and then he finds a way to make that puzzle all fit together so it's special. And that, that's that's what's what I'm really learning from him, you know, the more that I'm uh, in and around him. Uh, but, yeah, he he's... He's fantastic and deserves every every accolade out there, in my opinion. So, produce. So, Alan's a producer. You're a producer. Tell us a little bit about the role, like, uh, of being a producer. Tell, explain that to the audience a little bit. Well, I say I'm a producer. I'll explain what that is. But you know, really, <laughs> really, in our band and our lineup uh, for Save the World, Robert is the exceptional producer well, he, and, yes. and and he, he's uh, he's amazing but um uh, basically what a producer does is just what i said you you, you take the elements uh that either the songwriter brings in and the musician and you put them all together and decide you know how it's going to sound what the treatment will be with the effects and, and how it's arranged uh all of that you got it you kind of got the final say on what it's going to what it's going to be hmm. um you even instruct the engineer how you want things done, but he he puts all the pieces together. He gets the pieces of the puzzle and he gets to lay them out and put them together and and uh, you know make it beautiful, make it art. And uh, some people are very very good at that. Mutt Lang, Alan Parsons, Robert Wright. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I say when I say producer, I use that term very loosely. I make a lot of sketches when I write and mm. and. And I lay out my production ideas in those sketches, and and a lot of that will translate to Robert. And a lot of times, he'll just take it and you know, inject steroids onto it. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even think of that. So, the the guys that are really really great at that really bring something unique to the table. It's something that the that the musician may not even, or the songwriter or the performer or whatever may not himself even envision, and then right. the producer can come in and take this take this thing that's pretty already pretty cool and really kind of like make it amazing exactly just, exactly. just for instance for instance real quick i, I remember reading an, an article with uh, brian adams and he had just gotten done working with mutt lang on that record that had all those hits and he mm -hmm. said you know i had all this these songs written and then mutt came to canada and basically tore them apart and said, what if we make the bridge, the hook, and make the hook, you know, and moved all these things around. And he said, you know, I thought I was a pretty good songwriter. He said, but the guy really made me work and stretch out and made things better. And that's what a good producer does. All right. Now, speaking of stretching things out and going in new directions, let's talk about Save the World. Now, Save the World is you with John Wasaki and um... Robert Wright. Robert Wright. I'm sorry. I must call him Robert Taylor. <laughs> I have <to> <laughs> names running around. Robert Wright. Now, tell us about how this band got started. How did you guys got all, all together? And let's talk about the music and the records. Sure. Well, when I was younger, I grew up uh, up in the Northeast. I grew up in Connecticut. And uh, John is from uh, Springfield, Mass. And uh, I was looking to put a band together. And I was going out to clubs looking at some players. And I spied John. And um, I got him together for our little club cover band that we were doing up there. At that time, you could really make a, a decent living, you know, having a good cover band. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, I stole John and the bass player from the band he was playing with and, and okay. started a band along with my my future wife called Restless. And um, we, we played that area for, I think, 10 or 11 years, uh, really all over the place. We, we went as far as uh, St. Thomas and all that. But that's where I met John, so we have a, a long musical history there. And, of course, he went on later on to a multi-platinum selling band, Stained, and they did quite well. Um, 
a few years ago, John called me up out of the blue, and he's like, hey, how are you? And we were chatting. And I, and I said, man, you got to get down here. So he came to visit me for a few days, and and uh, you know, we were just talking about you know, what, what we were each doing and everything that was going on. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking to do something. And I said, well, let's, let's put some stuff together. So we got together, and I immediately thought of Robert, because Robert and I have a – just a great musical kinship on, on uh, stuff we like. And, and uh, we, we just agree like 95% of the time on, on how something should be done. So mm-hmm. uh, I love what he, I love what he does with my songs and his, he's a wonderful writer too. So um, we got together and decided we were going to cut one song that I had uh, written called bleed. And um, we went to uh, my buddy's studio and uh, we smacked it down in a day and, we were kind of all looking at each other in the seat, and I think nobody wanted to say it, but I'm like, damn, you know, this is a band. I mean, you could feel it immediately. It's just that thing. And I'd walked away from something like that years before and always regretted it. I had a mm-hmm. really cool lineup, and uh, unfortunately it was during the hair band Pretty Boy times, and, and it just wasn't that kind of band. Mm-hmm. But we had we had a definite sound and great songs, and, and we let it go because we just didn't feel the timing was right, I think. Subliminally, everybody was thinking that. And uh, with this band, I didn't want to do that. I was just like, you know what? We're old enough now to appreciate this. Let's 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 go down this road a little and see what happens. That's pretty much how it started. So, describe a little bit, if you can. I mean, this is always hard to kind of put your music into words because people, everybody's like, well, you need to just listen. Uh, but can you kind of describe the, you know, the sort of band sound or the band's approach? Um, well, there's never an approach. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's never an approach, and and I wish I could say that there was, but no, we just uh, really, honestly, we we look for songs um, that pop, you know, th- mm-hmm. that we go, all right, this this is strong, and we move those to the front of the pack, and then how those songs develop, I mean, the song dictates that. We don't dictate that. Mm-hmm. I know it seems like a producer or a songwriter, but if if you're smart, good songs lay themselves out, and you you're just the vehicle for how that thing develops. So we really try to treat the song as, as uh, you know, being being the the uh, you know the actor here, and we're just behind the scenes. Uh, we're just a vehicle. So it it could be anything. I mean, you'll hear a lot of different influences in this music. You'll hear stuff from. I've had people tell me this sounds like Nine Inch Nails meets you know meets uh, Evanescence meets Toto. Mm. Um, it's just whatever people hear in it. You're going to hear all these different influences in it. Um, because we like all kinds of music, to be quite honest, and and it's going to creep in there. And uh, it's funny when one guy runs down that road a little bit and starts putting a part down. You go, yeah, that's it. You know, that's cool. We all know where he's going with it. And uh, you know, then everybody else jumps on that bandwagon. So um, yeah, it's the songs are the songs are king. Um, tell us because the uh, I have not heard bleed. I I was looking for it and I couldn't. I guess that can that can be can that be uh, gotten on iTunes or. Is that not out yet or? Not out yet. So what's going oh, okay. on with that is that was our initial song, and we think that's going to be the big, strong song. We did a mm-hmm. really great video that I think is going to be a jaw dropper for people because it's, it's like a small movie, and it's, okay. it's, uh, it's got an oh-my-gosh moment in it. So um, that's going to be strong. And uh, our, our PR department said, you guys should release something first. You know, let's get, the, let's get everybody's mouths watering a little bit. And, see what it is so actually the song that you heard is our demo of uh <laughs> our demo of circus maximus that kicked out. ass dan i mean Thanks. that's Thank i you. was like whoa man this is awesome yeah, yeah. and and that's that's what robert can do in his house i mean those are <laughs> oh, things shit. that uh yeah that's what robert put out as our demo and uh we have uh, a great guy billy decker who's a, a big uh engineer here in nashville he's mixed uh, i think uh I think it's 30 million records, and he's got. Uh, so he has some practice. Or, or has, yeah, he's got some practice. He's got some. There's 30 million sales, and he's got a, a bunch of number ones. He's he, he's quite good, and um, and and uh, he was handpicked by Robert, who I trust implicitly. Robert's like, this is the guy, you know. So, anyhow, um, we're just now getting the initial mixes of those back, and they're they're uh, they're just they're great. We're very excited. So. Um, yeah, so yeah, the Circus Maximus uh, cut that you hear now is is <laughs> is our demo, and we released it as a freebie out to people so they can hear. This is what the band sounds like when it's not, like super duper produced, um, and you're gonna get exactly what we you know what we were putting down that day, uh, and the whole vibe. 
So when is so when are, what's the forecast for when we might see uh, the album uh, released? Because so right, six months so, from now, a year. What do you think? No, in about in about a month, you're gonna see you're gonna see the bleed video come out, and then we're we're uh, about uh, mid June, or, or pardon me, early June, end of May. You're gonna see that the the, uh, the record will be done, and it's self titled. It's just called Save the World, and um, yeah, we just. Again, we're just trying to make it more about the material and less about the band and the players, uh, you know, because that's ultimately what we're trying to. Uh, we want to, you know, we want people to hear these songs and, and get something from the songs, like we used to when we were coming up, and you know, that's that's at least where I where I came from. I hope it's where most yeah. people come from. They get turned on by the music, and then later on, you start digging through the liner notes and that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, um, is is this a? It, are you guys going to play live? Are you playing live? Are you going to tour? Like, what's, what, what do you think? Right now, it's a studio band, but we've been talking about uh, touring live, and John has some great connections, obviously, from his time with Stained and, and uh, made some great relationships there with other bands and different things. So we're, we're talking right now. And, um, if we do it, we're going to come out. It's going to be epic. We don't want to come out and be that club band that goes night after night after night and mm-hmm. – um, I'm not knocking those people at all. Uh, it's just we, we, we want to come out and we we want to do it big, and uh, you know, big production, video, and the whole nine yards. Uh, we want to see if we can do that and keep it nimble and small enough where we can reach enough people. Because if you know it starts getting super expensive, it just doesn't make any sense. We can't do it. You can't afford to pay for it. So we're we're going to try to do it in a way where we can come out and just uh, have a have a really great show and have a you know an experience when you go out. What are you doing right now? Are you uh, is there are you gonna are you out on the road with Alan Parsons soon, or are you just yeah. concentrating on Save the World? Uh, well, we're concentrating on finishing up Save the World, and then I go out next week with Alan Parsons. Um, Robert plays with a country artist uh, called uh, Sammy Kershaw, who's like George Jones on steroids. Mm-hmm. It's great, mu- great music. And uh, John's John has a uh, a band he's doing here in town called the Natalie Brady Band, and uh, she's fantastic. Uh, singer, songwriter. I actually have some cuts on their stuff that they're doing. Uh, but yeah, but right now the focus is trying to finish up on, uh, you know, getting the, the record mixed and uh, mastered and, and get it out and out to the folks. Um, if people want to hear Circus Maximus, they want to get that taste. <laughs> where can they go <laughs> to get that? I, I, I know where to go, but why don't you tell the uh, sure. at home? <laughs> yeah, just go to savetheworldband.com. And if you get on there, it'll say sign up. And, uh, you know, we instructed our people, please don't pester the fans. Just uh, give them information when they need to know. And they're they're a really cool uh, media company, so they get it. And, um, yeah, sign up, and you'll find out what's going on. And immediately you get a free download of the Circus Maximus uh, demo. And I don't want to scare people with demo. Uh, You've heard it, Lou. It it doesn't sound like a demo. No, 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 no. (laughs) This doesn't sound like it was recorded in a garage or something. No, it's like it just rocks. (laughs) Kick that. Yeah, well, well, thanks. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's the magic of uh, our Robert Wright. He's pretty special, so um, I appreciate the kind words there. Um, hey, everyone, uh, uh, we're going to wrap up here in, in a second. Uh, Dan, can you hang on? I'd like to do a bonus question uh, uh, with you if you got a minute. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, this is you've been listening to uh, Dan Tracy. The band is Save the World, and it is SaveTheWorldBand.com. You just pop in your name and email when you get to the homepage there, and when you hit the submit button, boom, it comes right to your computer. There's no fooling around, and you're going to love it. Uh, SaveTheWorldBand.com, uh, Dan Tracy. Uh, guys, you've been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Uh, go to LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com. Every Wednesday is a new interview like like the one you're listening to right now, so it must be a Wednesday. <laughs> and every Saturday is a new music podcast where you get to hear, get a little taste of some of this amazing music like Save the World and some of the different bands that we've been uh, uh, we've been promoting. If you are interested in rock and roll and great music that is just not getting on the corporate outlets out there, you want to go to supportindierock.com. This is a way that you can get involved and making sure that the world knows about this amazing, and I mean amazing music that's out there, um, that is supportindierocks.com. One more shout-out to my sponsor, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine, pplmag.com. Guys, uh, 
Thank you so much for listening. We will see you on the next podcast, LudiniRockandRollCircus.com. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you soon.